of crisis requires the best of humanity. Now is the time for action. It's 5.40 in the morning. Uh, my name's Andy Crack. I work for Alexia Packaging. Uh, I'm just about to go into work to find out how we've got on over the weekend. The guys have all been working all no every night, every day, over the bank holiday weekends, while everyone else has been isolating. Uh, we've produced food cartons for the, for the supermarkets, and we're just trying to get them out the door, get them on the shelves, so people can eat. <music> My name is Kevin, I work at Inkson Paperboard in Workington, Cumbria, as part of the Fold and Box Board Manufacturers team. Myself and my colleagues are classed as key workers. We work in a continuous process industry producing the highest quality Fold and Box Board for the graphics, film and pharmaceutical sectors. Stay safe and follow the government advice and guidance. Everybody. Buon noite, buenas noches, bienvenue, buona notte.
you remember a pop song which seems so appropriate for today called Don't Stand So Close To Me Don't Stand So Close To Me It was actually released 40 years ago but what was the name of the group? Was it A. ABBA B. The Police C. Bob Marley and the Wailers or D. Covid and the Coronas Yeah, the answer is, of course, B, the police, with the very distinctive voice of Sting. Second test question. Carton board, the material used to make cartons, is very versatile and environmentally friendly. But which of these is not applicable to carton board? A, biodegradable, B. Renewable C. Recyclable D. They are all applicable to carton board. Yeah, the answer of course is D. Carton board is renewable, recycled and biodegradable. So I hope you see how it works. The real questions will be asked throughout the Carton event and awards that's about to start soon. So what have we got in store for you today? The event will be moderated by Mike Turner and Tony Hitchin. Jean-Francois Roche, the president of ECMA, will be doing a presentation. 
and then we'll announce the winners of the Gold and Platinum Awards. Our special guest interview is with Michael Edwards, better known as Eddie the Eagle. You won't want to miss our half-time infotainment, lots of videos and fun, and then it's awards, awards, awards. Horse Bitterman will introduce the Pro Card and Student Awards, and then we'll present to the winners the Pro Card and Young Designers Award, the Pro Card and Student Video Award, and then we'll have the grand finale, the winners of the European Cart and Excellence Award. But don't leave before the end, because there's some fun, even after the ending. Hello everybody, I'm Mike Turner, MD of ECMA. And I'm Tony Hitchin, the General Manager of ProCarton. Good afternoon, good morning and good evening depending on where you are and welcome to the ECMA and ProCarton 2020 Carton event. And awards. Nice place, eh? We'll be your hosts for the next two hours. We have members, associates, students, the media, and other friends joining us today for a couple of hours, which culminates in ce celebrating the 2020 Carton Awards. We've included some fun with our special guest, but also a serious side as we link some of the qualities he has demonstrated, such as tenacity and resilience that many of you too have demonstrated during the last six months to keep businesses operating safely and effectively whilst ensuring we execute our COVID-19 role as an essential industry. Before we reflect on the last 12 months, we'd also like to acknowledge and thank all our sponsors that have supported this event. Our platinum sponsors are Metzaboard, Igersund, Graphic Packaging, Maya Melnoff Carton, and Bobst. And our gold sponsors, RDM, Van Gendekten, HHS Baumer, and Westrock. Of course, our original plan was not to hold this virtual event, but to be in Krakow for our annual Congress. Those that tuned in early will have seen some highlights from the previous three years' galas. Spectacular, eh? We hope we've put on an event that will be as enjoyable, even though we'll miss the splendour of Poland's most beautiful city. That video of Krakow reminds us that life was normal before COVID-19 and will be again. And we look forward to visiting Krakow for our next Congress. In these challenging times, I'm delighted that we have partnered this event with the UNHCR and will be making a substantial donation from the proceeds of this event to their work supporting communities affected by COVID-19. More to come on this later. I've now been with ECMA for 13 months, advocating and defending folding cartons and carton board. I knew this industry was special, and this last year has reinforced to me what a superb, sustainable and versatile product folding cartons are, and the sheer talent we have working in the industry. 
We will celebrate with just some of this talent later when the award winners are announced and we see some of their brilliance in innovation. My three core priorities on joining ECMA were to, well, firstly, to get out and meet individual members and the national associations that make up ECMA. And I enjoyed productive meetings with ProPAC in Austria, GIFASP in Italy, CAP in France, the Nordic Carton Day in Denmark, the President's Day at the BPIF Cartons in the UK, and with our friends in the FFI in Germany, as well as with CASAD in Turkey. And I gained really valuable knowledge of their key priorities. And I was also able to meet and tour the facilities of many individual converter and on all issues around food safety and is midway through writing an update of the ECMA good manufacturing practice. Our Pharma Forum provides a solid platform for members and is also looking at a best practice standard for pharma packaging. Our Tobacco Forum focuses on keeping members informed on developments within the, the seemingly widening scope of the Tobacco Products Directive legislation. And ECMA's Marketing and Communications Committee meet regularly to discuss and agree the content and direction of ECMA's activities. In July, our Sustainability Committee met for the first time. This working group has a full agenda, ensuring the sustainability benefits of folding cartons are fully understood and promoted. And our Association Development Committee provides a valuable platform for our national association heads to meet. And of course, I can't forget mentioning my colleagues on the Executive Committee, led by our President Jean-Francois Roche, who provide the strategic direction for ECMA. So in 2020, I plan to continue the meetings, presentations and activity. Then COVID-19 hit and everything came to a stop. As over a few weeks, meetings and travel plans were postponed and then cancelled, including, of course, our own Congress. And I watched via Zoom and Microsoft Teams meetings how our members were hit by the COVID-19 tsunami. But rather than slow down, and despite the significant operational headwinds, our members across Europe stepped up, stepped up to the plate to ensure we kept our customers supplied and fulfilled the demand increases that were being seen. The European Commission quickly recognised us as an essential industry. And in fact, during a chaotic two weeks, some countries started to take unilateral action, closing borders. The European Commission struggled to maintain the union and ECMA worked with the Commission throughout the early crisis, feeding back information from the COVID-19 working groups we established, ensuring Brussels had good information for creating policy. For example, keeping pan-European freight routes open, the so-called green lanes, and critically, trucks carrying carton board and folding cartons moving. During COVID-19, with many members working at home, we saw a superb opportunity to really connect with you. Hence, ECMA started regular webinars, and we've had four to date on subjects such as sustainability, European packaging legislation, and Brexit, what happens next? And these webinars have been well received, attracting up to 350 participants per webinar. Encouraged with the feedback, we are embarking on a programme of webinars for 2021 around the theme, working towards a new normal, where we will cover consumer goods trends, creativity in a world with no travel, and of course, sustainability. With any association, it is important that we are focused in the right areas and for our members. And hence, we ran a survey for two months during the summer. And I'm delighted with the feedback we received from 17 countries and with over 90% of participants feeling we were focused in the right areas 
and consider their membership of ECMA to be helpful or very helpful. The full results of the survey will be released shortly. Well, as we move towards the close of 2020 and the start of a new year, ECMA will continue to be the voice of the European carton sector. The Commission's agenda in 2021 will have a high focus on packaging and ECMA will be involved at every step. In addition, we need to track the end of the transition period when Britain exits the EU. And of course, COVID-19 remains a threat and ECMA will respond proactively to ensure all our members across Europe are kept informed as we face these various headwinds. In 2021, we will also publish detailed market data, a European carton prospects update, which will show how this market has stood up during the COVID-19. Finally, ECMA will continue to act as the preeminent networking platform for the European folding carton sector. And I really look forward to working with you all during the coming 12 months. Well, that's enough from me, and I'd now like to hand over to Tony to hear more about ProCarton. Thanks, Mike. According to the statutes of ProCarton, the articles of the association, the full name for ProCarton is actually the European Carton Promotion Association. Or if you wanted to use an acronym, ECPA. So on one hand, we have ECMA, and on the other, ECPA, the ma and pa, the mother and father of the industry. And that's the way I like to look at us, as complementary organisations conducting different activities. ProCarton is largely externally focused, whereas ECMA is more internally and politically focused. The statutes state that ProCarton's role is to, quite simply, promote the use of cartons and carton board. In practice, we actually offer a much broader range of services than that, representing our members' interests in a variety of different ways, but the promotion of cartons and carton board is at the heart of everything that we do. So let's look at some of the things that ProCarton gets up to. It should be remembered that ProCarton has no full-time employees, just a handful of part-time specialists who try to conjure up the occasional bit of magic. To help me today, I've brought along my box of tricks, or more accurately, a carton of tricks. So let's delve in and see what we've got. <laughs> the European Carton Excellence Award trophy. The three award schemes are one of the biggest activities that we undertake, and there can be no better demonstration of the capabilities of the industry than highlighting the winners of the European Carton Excellence Award alongside the innovative ideas that our student designers come up with. You might hear a bit more about the awards later. Ah, newspaper, The Times. It's today's, just to prove that we're live. Soaring virus rate leaves Britain on lockdown alert. Worrying times. But spreading our message is key, which is largely based around sustainability. Our prime target audience is a group I call packaging decision makers. These are the executives who have the ultimate decision about what packaging materials they should choose. Well, however, the consumer and the media have a big role to play in influencing these decision makers and indeed politicians. We employ a PR consultancy that operates on a pan-European basis and they're supported by locally based consultants in Germany, Italy and also now in France. In the last year, we issued 35 press releases, most of which got translated into five or more languages and that led to 600 pieces of coverage in 18 countries across Europe. And that's only what our cutting service picks up. I'm sure there were many more that we didn't see. Oh, can I find it? Oh yeah, it's a mobile phone. Social media is central to any communication plan these days. I hope all of you watching follow our social media channels, be that Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest or LinkedIn. And if not, why not? And please tell your friends and colleagues we actually posted over 500 times in the last 12 months and our numbers of followers have grown significantly.
Facebook is up 45%, whilst our LinkedIn numbers have grown 75%. More and more, we're using videos and GIFs in social media, as moving images are far more arresting. One particular success has been our Carton Campaigners cartoon video series. We've produced four videos in the series so far, and they've been watched nearly 1.2 million times on Facebook alone. The Carton campaigners were based on the five R's of responsibility. Renew, reduce, reuse, replace and recycle. And each of the five has been made into a cartoon, carton superhero. Talking about recycling brings me quite neatly to the next item in my carton of tricks. In January this year, Pro Carton was awarded this trophy the European Paper Recycling Award for our Ticket Schools Education Programme. Ticket stands for Trees into Cartons, Cartons into Trees, and teaches children about the benefits of cartons, looking after the environment and recycling. Only trouble is that I've been told I've got to give this trophy back as they want to use it next year. Well, that's recycling for you. What else do we have in here? Ah. A school ruler, I don't know whether you can see that. Because of the lockdowns and school closures, we developed a package of homeschooling kits known as Educarton, which include a new version of Ticket, Teach Ticket at Home, adapted for the new abnormal, as I like to call it. Ah, shoe, uh, a small shoe. A small shoe will leave a small footprint. Cartons has the smallest carbon footprint of any packaging I'm aware of. We updated the industry cradle to gate carbon footprint a year ago, and now our life cycle inventory data has been added to the key international databases. And we're working with our consultants to ensure our data will comply with the EU's forthcoming legislation on product environmental footprints, or PEF for short. Oh, yeah. A watch, time. Unfortunately, I've only limited time to talk to you today about all the fun, or should I say work, that we do at ProCarton. I haven't even mentioned our consumer research studies, the trade in consumer advertising in Germany, France, and the UK, the bloggers and social media influencers, influencers that we use, the cooperations that we undertake with many of the ECMA national associations, our giant dictionary with its definition of carton board, our statistics and infographics that we constantly update, our liaison with other industry associations. But most of that you can see on our website. So please join the other 100,000 people and more who visit our website each year and check out procarton.com. I think that's it from me. Oh no, there's one last item in my carton of tricks. If you've been watching carefully, I'm hoping this will work and you'll get it right. I'm going to show you five cards, five playing cards. They're British playing cards, so K stands for King, Q for Queen, J for Jack. I want you to pick one card. If you're in a group, you must decide which one card you want to pick. So the leader should pick the card. So here's the cards. Select one of these cards. OK, all chosen? I'm going to select one card, and I'm going to throw it away. And your card is gone. That's the magic of carton board. Tony, well done. <laughs> that was amazing. So before we move on to the first batch of awards, we'd like to start our little quiz. So to be in with a chance to win, remember you need to log on either by using this QR code, just open the camera and point at the QR code, or you can register on Slido using the hashtag CartonEvent. You'll need to enter your email address so we can get in touch if you're one of the five lucky winners. We've got five signed DVDs of the 2016 film Eddie the Eagle to be one. It's a really good watch, and as you'll find out shortly, 
It's an incredible story of ambition, tenacity, and in the end, success. So here's question one. The recycling rate of paper and cardboard packaging in Europe is higher than any other packaging material. But what percentage of paper and cardboard packaging is recycled in Europe? Is it A, 52%, B, 68%, C, 85%, or D, 98%? So 52, 68, 85, 98. Answer quickly. The answer is C. According to Eurostat, 84.6% of paper and cardboard packaging is recycled in the EU28. Plastic achieves less than half that figure. Well done if you got that right. OK, on to question two. ECMA and Procartan will be making a donation today to which organisation? A, the Agency for Packaging Excellence, APE. B, the Sustainability and Packaging Agency, SPA. C, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. Or D, the Injured Skiers Helpline, well known as TISH. So A, APE, B, SPA, C, UNHCR, D, TISH. Have you got your answer in? So the answer is... C, ECMA and Procartan are making a donation of €10,000 to the United Nations High Commission for Refugees for help with their work with refugees affected by the coronavirus. So there'll be more quiz questions later. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't even possible for our two presidents to travel to be with us today but I'm really delighted we have personal messages from them both. So let's hear firstly from Jean-Francois Roche, president of ECMA. Good afternoon, everybody. When we met in Malta last year, our 2020 plans were slightly different. Then, <clears throat> beginning of January, an extraordinary challenge called COVID-19 has invited himself. Since then, our personal and professional life have both changed drastically. The abnormality became somehow the new norm. Additionally, our industry had great responsibility for securing essential supply of goods. Over those challenging last seven months, our people and our business responded admirably to this ongoing crisis, thanks to all of you. As well as resilience and determination, we knew that innovation and creativity would be also extremely important during those unprecedented times, and we wanted the 2020 awards to showcase this. As we all know, cartons are not only superior in terms of sustainability and product safety, but also in terms of communication. They offer more space and attractive ways to communicate the brand's proposition, as well as accommodating the increasing amount of information that the consumer now expects. Tony and Mike will present you the annual showroom of the best in the carton and carton board industry, the European Carton Excellence Award 2020. It was certainly not a given that the award will be a success this year. Anyhow, the board mills and the converters have responded superbly to ensure that once again, we have a competition to remember. The digital online challenge for the award juries was managed without problem, thanks to the effort of our knowledgeable judges, who, together with Suzanne, debated every aspect of the merits of each entry. The winners, and we have 21 this year, plus the public award, will receive widespread attention across Europe 
and we will support the triumphant companies in communicating their success through the press, social media, e-marketing, and our website. For the first time in the history, this award ceremony will have a wide audience, brand owners, journalists, teachers, students, as well as all sectors of the paperboard packaging supply industry, joining today's celebration, regardless of where they work or live, a great and new benefit to everyone. In a few moments, Mike and Tony will present the gold and platinum winners to you. Then, in the second part of this ceremony, you will see and meet the winners of the four categories, as well as the Public Award, the Save the Planet Award, and the Innovation Awards. And then, as the final highlight of the day, the carton of the year 2020. I just would like to thank personally all the entrants for their enthusiasm for the European Carton Excellence Awards in those challenging times. And thanks also to all of you for joining us today. I really do hope to see you all next year in Krakow for the 2021 ECMA Congress. In the meantime, take good care of yourself, your family, your friends, and your business colleagues. And now, enjoy the show. Merci, Jean-Francois. I'm glad to see that he remembers the time when the British and the French worked together in harmony to produce that beautiful plane. How times change. It's now time to get the awards ceremony underway. But uh, hold on, I've got some message coming through here. Apparently some additional characters have just logged on. In a world riddled with rubbish, only the carton campaigners can save the planet. Hurry up, guys! It's our bit now! Sorry, I was getting my outfit ready. I'm so excited, the whole carton board industry meeting up in one place to celebrate cartons. Actually, they're not meeting up, they live in a virtual world nowadays. Huh? You mean they're not real, like us? Where are they then? They're all watching on their screens. Do we need to wear masks like them? No, you only need them on Earth. What a strange place. Shh, they're about to announce the winners. The Carton Campaigners, helping to save the planet. I'm glad they could join us. The awards were a challenge for everyone this year. But by pulling together converters, mills, judges, ECMA and ProCarton, we got there in the end. This year, the jury selected 26 cartons for the shortlist, which will be showcased for the public vote over the last six weeks. The shortlist was selected based on the entry information you all submitted, but the judges all received physical samples of all the shortlisted entries so they could make their decisions based on the actual packs. So let's recap who made the shortlist. impressive. Can I also welcome the shortlisted entrants? I'm glad so many of you were able to get the afternoon off. Hi everybody. So this year the jury has selected just eight gold award winners and six platinum award winners. So we'll start with the gold awards. The winners are Le Moine Cotton Buds by Poisson and My Melnoff Carton. <clears throat> IBSA Profilo Syringe Pack by IGB and Stora Enso.
It's waiting for the next one to come up. Keeping everyone excited. Glad to see there's some celebration going on at IGB. Bauerfine Sock Sleeve. Wraparound packaging by Carl Knauer and Sappy. Well done to them. Great looking pack. God, I can see a lot of happy faces. A lot of celebrating going on. Just waiting for the next award to come through. Chutulu by Possel and RDM. Congratulations. Possel again, well done. Some smiling faces there. So they should be. Two awards so far. Amazing. Fantastic. Fibre Shield by Parvi Packaging and Store Enzo. Great looking product, that Fibre Shield. Well done, guys. Yeah, very good. I see them all in the room. Congratulations. So the next award winner. It's the Face Mask Aid by Seema Verpacken and Smurfit Kappa Hoyer. Congratulations, guys. Well done. Smiling faces there. And dancing. <laughs> Thumbs up to you. This is great, Tony. <laughs> Love handing out awards. Hennessy Classium by Artigrafici Reggiani Eli and Metaboard and Storenzo. Lots of people to celebrate with that one. Yeah, Those. they've got the cognac out. Yep, they're enjoying it. Well done. Lovely looking carton, lovely looking drink as well. It's even better at night when it glows. <laughs> and finally, the UCB Clinical Vials Pack by Rondo and Metza Bald. Congratulations, guys. So well done to all of the gold winners. You should all see, all be really proud of your achievements. So normally at the Congress, we have a mix of motivational and informative speakers. Today we have something a bit different, but every bit as engaging. And I'm going to let him introduce himself. experience, I set off to qualify for the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary. The rest is history really. I was the first British competitor to represent Great Britain in the Olympic ski jumping. I held the British ski jumping record for more than a decade. My story isn't a fairy tale story about winning against all odds. It's a story about ambition, overcoming adversity and giving everything you've got to follow a dream. It's a story about never giving up. My name is Michael Edwards, but most people know me as Eddie the Eagle. Good morning, Eddie. Morning. Great to meet you. We better do an elbow bump. <laughs> Hi, Eddie. Morning. Nice to see you. We'll have some fun today. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Love your masks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the world we're living in at the, at the, at the moment. Um, we are all socially distanced. I couldn't ski jump this far, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, should we get rid of these? Let's take this off, yeah. Oh, oh no, put them back on, put them back on. So Eddie, <laughs> everyone in the UK, Great Britain knows Eddie the Eagle. But when I talk to colleagues in Europe, they all know Eddie the Eagle as well. So why, why do so many people know about you and your story? Well, I was the best looking ski jumper in the world. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think the name's very popular. It's very easy to remember. And obviously what happened at Calgary, captured everybody's imagination and of course the film as well. Uh, so I'm amazed that 32 years later people still remember the name Eddie the Eagle and quite fondly and it's lovely. We're trying to spice it up a little bit and do something a little bit different. <laughs> We've been searching on the internet to find some, some photos of, of you and we'd just like you to, to explain what happened and what led to the photos. So we can start off with this one and I noticed you're wearing Canadian gloves. Ah, 
Ah, yes. I've still got that torch, that Olympic torch. Um, I was very kindly asked by the Canadian Olympic Association or authority uh, to be a torch bearer for the Vancouver Olympics. And it was a lovely honour. And it was about eight o'clock in the morning. It was about minus 30 degrees, freezing cold. And then I, um, I sort of received the torch. Uh, it was all lit. And then I, I ran for about 200 metres and then handed it to the next person. Uh, but I've still got the track suit and all the gear and the torch and stuff at home. So yeah, so that was Vancouver torch bearing. We couldn't do this interview without showing you this picture. Um, what on earth are you wearing here? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very fetching number. Oh my God, I was so embarrassed. Um, that was Splash, um, a, a TV show about springboard diving and uh, they approached me to ask me whether I would like to take part in it and um, I, I agreed I thought it'd be great a challenge to learn to dive but the costume uh, people in their wisdom uh, dress me up like um, Big Daddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is a Big Daddy costume isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. <laughs> but yeah I think that was the first round of Splash uh, and I had to wear that ridiculous um, costume. Brilliant, brilliant. Eddie you're a good-looking chap who are the two ugly people in this photo? Oh dear, I, I know, I really didn't want to be photographed with them. I thought, I, I, you know, me being so, as good looking as I am, but uh, Hugh Jackman and Taron Egerton, that was one of the premieres. But, this is your, um, of your film? Of my film, yes. Yeah. Not many people realise, but I signed the deal to make that film 20 years ago. And in the end, I said, give me a call when you actually start making the film. And after 10 years, I thought, well, the film will never be made. But it was because of Splash and winning that first series of Splash. That was the impetus then to make the film. And of course, I, I travelled around the world um, to about 15 different premieres. Here's one of you sitting down on the job. <gasps> so tell me about that little episode. Oh, my God. Yes. That was filmed near Salzburg for um, Red Bull and they wanted to kind of take the mickey type of thing because all their, all their interviews are all sort of deadpan, very serious, and they talk about their life and all their winnings and trophies and things. But of course they couldn't do that with me because I came 58th at Calgary. <laughs> so we did a bit of a, um, a kind of a, a take the mickey type thing and they wanted me to pretend to go for the world ski jump record on a toboggan. Um, and I went, I think, 12 metres flying through the air on the toboggan. So uh, yeah, that was the world record, ski jumping on a toboggan. <laughs> well, so you did have a world record after all. <laughs> I did get a world, I'm a world record holder. <laughs> you were not only known for, for your sporting exploits, but also you had a very distinctive look about yourself at the time. If I remember you had a, uh, um, a little moustache. Yes. And you had some, some serious glasses oh, on. Oh, probably thick. Spectacles on. Yes. And uh, I mean, that obviously led to this particular photograph. <laughs> yes, that was the early 1990s and that was a Specsavers commercial and um, one of the agents um, that I, I, was, I, I had approached Specsavers and suggested me for an advert and they loved the idea and this was Specsavers very first national commercial and it was brilliant, uh, I had such great time. Okay, Eddie, we've, um, we've learned today what a celebrity you are, but it, I think it's useful now and interesting for our viewers to really drill in and learn a little bit about your sporting background and performance. Yes, I, I've been skiing a lot more than I've been ski jumping, actually. I started skiing um, at school on a school ski trip and I learned at 13. I, kept, I was very lucky. I lived very close to a dry ski slope. Um, had a lesson there, went to Andalo in the Italian Dolomites for my first ski trip, loved it, came back and that dry ski slope, the local one, became my home. I was up there every night after school or weekend or school holidays, started racing, alpine ski racing, slalom, giant slalom, raced internationally and then went to America to race, ran out of money and I, I tried to find something cheaper to do and ski jumping was cheaper. So I started ski jumping. It was just economical, really. It was much cheaper for me to ski jump than... Uh, and a bit more dangerous as well. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, it was, it was exciting. It was exciting. And I, um, I, I knocked on the door at the ski jump and they, they said, there's a lost property shed at the bottom. Go and find out what fits and have a go. And, and off I went, but I did it very, very quickly. It normally takes five, six, seven years. 
and I went from a beginner to the 90 meter in about five months and, um, wow. and that was it, whoosh, and off I went and then managed to qualify for Calgary and then went to the Olympics and became Eddie the Eagle. And that's my kind of story in a nutshell, really. Yeah. And I came 58th out of 59. A lot of people don't <laughs> realize this, but at Calgary, a Frenchman fell and broke his leg in the training. So I'm taking that as a, you know, a 58th out of 59. I didn't come last. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. Not Eddie. a lot of people know that. <laughs> yeah. no. Your life must have changed tremendously after that. Yes, yes. It, it, my, my feet really didn't touch the ground for about three years after Calgary. I was flying all over the world. I was opening shopping centres, golf courses, hotels. And of course, at Calgary, straight after Calgary, I got banned from the Olympic team because the British Olympic Association said that I was making a mock of the sport and bringing the sport into disrepute. So I got kicked off the team. I wanted to have Calgary as my first Olympics. I wanted to get a little bit of attention from the UK press and then hopefully turn that attention into sponsorship and then make it easier for me to go for the 92, 94, 98, 2002 and 2006 Olympics. And then over the next 20 years, I could have got better and better and better at ski jumping. That's what I wanted to do. Then I got banned because I became Eddie the Eagle. So the only thing left open to me was PR. And um, I tra traveled the world for three or four years, earning about 10 grand an hour to open all these, you know, fun rides and hotels and golf courses and stuff, having a whale of a time. You got a law degree. Yes, yes, I got a law degree. But but goals was was always something that I had because I had daily goals, I had weekly goals, monthly goals, yearly goals, and of course, the big goal was the Olympics. But I had lots of, you know, individual small little goals, and I kept having to achieve those. Can you just talk us through what drove you on? I just had such a passion, I still do, for skiing, but I was also very highly self-motivated. Whenever I did something, I wanted to be the best at it. So when I started skiing, that was it. You know, I wanted to get into the England team, the British team, I wanted to go to the Olympics, and I wanted to be the champion, the best. So Eddie, not many people have the opportunity to see their life story played out on the big screen. So tell me, what was it like for you watching Eddie the Eagle, the film? <sighs> We were blown away by it. We came out, we were all crying. Oh my God, this is such a good film. And I still love it to this day. It really captured the heart and spirit and essence of my story. And they did it in such a lovely way. They captured it very well. They, they captured it so, so well. And, and to have Hugh Jackman and Taron play, play me and, and all that kind of thing, they did such a great job. I loved it. I mean, it shows some tremendous hardship. I think there's one scene where it looks like you're sleeping in, in, a, in a cupboard or, or a bar yes. and, and really roughing it. Was that, was that, is that based on truth? Um, they, they, they've used a certain amount of artistic license, but not very much. I, I think personally, I think the film is about 85, 90% true, but it only represents about 20% of my life as a ski jumper. In fact, I think my life was a lot worse, really, than the film portrayed. Uh, I slept in many basements, um, when I drove my camper van, I parked in the basement of apartment blocks because it was warmer uh, and uh, away from the elements. Um, so yeah, I did a lot of that. So Eddie, the, um, the film shows you uh, being told as a child that you may not walk again. Mm -hmm. So was that made up for the film or was that, uh, mm -hmm. did that actually happen in real life? No, it, it kind of happened. It was just, when I was nine and 10, I had a really bad infection in my cartilages or in my cartilage in my knee. And I was constantly for two and a half years in and out of hospital and in and out of plaster. And they used to put me in a plaster cast from my ankle to my thigh. So I was literally in and out of plaster for two and a half years. Couldn't run, couldn't walk, couldn't do sport, couldn't do anything. But in the film, if they'd have put me in a plaster cast, it could have implied that I'd simply broken my leg when it was much more serious than that. So in the film, one of the opening scenes, as a little boy, I'm coming down the stairs in calipers. Now, I didn't wear calipers, but that was just to represent or to symbolize the fact that I was out of action for two and a half years. Right. And then two, three years later, um, I went skiing and of course my mum and dad were a little bit nervous because I had these problems with my knee and they thought, oh, do you really want to go skiing? But I've always wanted to have a go because I used to love watching Ski Sunday. Eddie, we've heard about the highlights from your career, but building a business needs courage, hard work, tenacity, and you needed the same qualities early on in your career. Can you just talk us through how you handled those challenges? Yeah, as, a, as an athlete, I think there's a lot of qualities 
being an athlete and competing and trying to achieve goals. Uh, the same as in business. Um, I think the biggest tool in my tool bag was resilience. And no matter how many people told me that it couldn't be done, it's impossible, give it up. Everybody I told when I started skiing, I'm gonna to go to Olympics, they just laughed. But then I managed to get there and through bags and bags of tenacity and never giving up and bags and bags of resilience, despite everybody telling me that it can't be done, I still achieved it against all the odds. And um, so yeah, it's very, very similar to building a business. Never give up. I was prepared to do anything. And if that meant, you know, scraping food out of the bin because I didn't know where my next meal was coming from, um, I was prepared to do it because I was doing something that I love to do. What's life for Eddie the Eagle today? Um, well, it's been very good. Obviously, the film helped enormously. For the last four years, I've been traveling all over the world, doing talks, uh, talking at conferences and dinners and lunches. I, I've been doing, on average, between eight and 10 speeches a week. But then COVID happened. The, the pandemic and the work just suddenly stopped. But I went back to my old job as a builder and plasterer. So I've been renovating a house. So I've been very busy and I've got permission to build two new houses. So I'll start those as well until things start to get back to normal. And then I can go back to doing the TV shows, the speaking and, and all that kind of thing, which I do love. So Eddie, are there certain things you can apply to whatever task you have in hand, whether it's plastering or ski jumping? What is your particular approach to whatever task you're faced with or challenge? Something I did naturally, which was very important, is visualisation. Um, and I think that's just as important in business as well. You've got to visualise yourself with your company being as big as you want it to be. And by visualising that, it helps you to achieve those goals. It was very, very important for ski jumping because my nearest ski jump was a thousand miles away. But if I sit in a room and just visualize and imagine myself seeing and feeling everything that I would see and feel as I'm flying through the air, so long as I go through that process, it's like I've never been away. And I think you can use that in anything, whether it's in sports, in business, uh, or in life. You've got to visualize it to be it. Yeah, that's a great point. Olympian. British record holder. Lawyer. Plasterer. Stuntman. Pop star. Speed skier. Legend. Legend. Eddie, thank you very much. Amazing man. After being kicked off the British team, he took full advantage of the PR opportunities that opened up for him. He danced, he dived, he sang. He actually had a number two hit in Finland. And he gained a law degree as a mature student. Top bloke too. We now move up to the Platinum Awards. Just six packs were selected. So with the first Platinum Award winner, we have Keel Clip by Graphic Packaging International. Happy looking Tom there. Well done, Tom. Party Delice by Rema Decker Packaging and Metzaboard. Lovely little tomato pack. Great looking pack. The Advent Calendar House by Autogen Packaging Belgium and International Paper. Well done, congratulations. Well done, Fabrice. Liqui Molly Klima Refresh by Edelman and Billerid Kosnaz. Congratulations, Edelman. Well done, everybody. Diadermine Peeling Mousse by Mayer Melhoff Packaging International and Igerson Holman Group. Congratulations. That's about Philippe. as happy as Philip ever gets. <laughs> well done. Celebrations in Austria. Rappy Block by Rat Pack & Co and Metzaboard. Doesn't look like Ursula to me, but maybe it is. <laughs> Glad to see so many smiling faces. It would have been nice to have seen you here in the studio with us, but I hope you agree this is a good second best. Many congratulations to all the platinum and gold winners, the category winners, and of course the ultimate prize of Carton of the Year are coming up later in the show. We've had some great winners so far. So question three in our quiz. So come on, have your phones at the ready. Are you all set? So European forests, which provide wood for paper packaging and other products, are expanding in size.
by how many football pitches a year does it, is this the equivalent of? Is it A, 100 football pitches a year, B, 1,500, C, 15,000, D, 500,000? So answers at the ready, A, 100, B, 1,500, C, 15,000, D, 500,000. Have you got your answer in? Answer just coming through now. Come on, who got it right? The answer is D, 500,000 football pitches. So between 2005 and 2020, European forests grew by 58,390 square kilometres. So that's an area bigger than Switzerland, and it amounts to 1,500 football pitches of forest growth every day, or over 500,000 football pitches per year. Bit of a trick question, that one. Well done to those who got it right. Next question. How many designs were entered into the 2020 Pro Carden Young Designers Award? Was it A, 82, B, 247, C, 556, or D, none? The competition was unfortunately cancelled due to COVID-19. <laughs> 82, 247, 556, or none? They're your options. If you're playing on the phone, please do so now. You have three more seconds before the answer will be revealed. And the answer is C. We had a record number of entries this year, despite the difficulties that the pandemic posed. So in total, 556 entries were received. Got a lot of people getting these questions right. Well done. So, OK, that's nearly the end of the first part, folks. But we now have something really interesting. We've got short videos from our five platinum sponsors. And we'll also hand over the check to the UNHCR. So stay tuned and we'll see you in 10 minutes. See you in 10. Packaging is a very important part of every purchasing decision and more and more consumers demand sustainable packaging. Why? Because they see that there is more and more plastics in the ocean and in landfills. They see the mountains of waste growing and they see our natural habitat shrinking. And consumers do not want to be part of the problem. They want to contribute to a solution. And therefore, we need a circular economy. And for packaging, we need sustainable packaging. Sustainable packaging means packaging which is recyclable, but which also uses recycled material. And most important, it should be from natural resources, which is wood. So, carton board is a renewable, recyclable material. Carton board is the first choice. Carton board is the packaging solution for tomorrow. Hi Mike and hi Tony. Thank you for tuning in and thank you ProCarton and ECMA for this generous donation of 10,000 euros. This donation means that, especially in these dire times due to COVID-19, we can help protect the lives of thousands of refugees people just like you and me that have been forced to flee their homes. For example, like in Greece right now. We're truly grateful for your support and it means very much to us that you chose UNHCR for this donation. Have a great rest of the event. 
Thank you. Bye. Egerson Paperboard wants to give you a little something extra with your packaging. Peace of mind. So how can we provide that? With Paperboard that takes all the boxes regardless of your product and packaging needs. Our Paperboard offers excellent color reproduction, whiteness that won't fade, design versatility, taint and odor neutrality, and superior durability from package conception all the way to the end user's home. On top of this, we also offer peace of mind when it comes to sustainability. Our paperboard mills in Workington, UK and Igerson, Sweden recently received platinum medals from EcoVardis. That's their highest possible sustainability rating, awarded to just 1% of more than 65,000 companies assessed. Invercote, Inverform and Encarta from Igerson. It's never been easier to choose a premium packaging partner. For Metaboard, our mission is packaging solutions that respect nature. We have a strong commitment to our mission and we keep investing to meet our targets. With our Excellence Center, we now have a very ambitious and state-of-the-art concept for accelerating innovation. I'm excited about the possibilities it brings to Metaboard and our customers. The role of safe, pure and sustainable packaging has never been more significant. Through collaboration, we can continue to create excellent experiences for consumers. You bring us your needs and challenges. We help you create and test the solution. Together we can create the perfect package. Dear customers, the packaging industry is entering into a profound transformation. Brand owners and consumers put pressure on converters to become more agile and more sustainable. We now reveal a new vision which will ensure that your production can be done on demand, on time and on requested quality. The entire value chain will operate in full synergy, maximizing quality, efficiency and sustainability. Our vision is based on four cornerstones – connectivity, digitalization, automation and sustainability. To perform this vision, we are launching Bob's Connect, enabling an efficient data flow between the physical and the digital world. We at Bob's continue to deliver best-in-class machines and services. In the folding carton world, the converting equipments are becoming fully digitalized. Tools are becoming connected and smart, making the setup process shorter and consistent. Digital laser cutters will soon expand your possibilities. We are shaping the future of the packaging world with you. Please contact us. AB InBev has spent the last decade investing in circular packaging initiatives around the world to close the loop and reduce waste. As a result, we've partnered with GPI to launch Killclip, a sustainable, fully recyclable paperboard packaging solution designed to replace plastic rings. One of the great features of this pack is can orientation. Can and carton graphics combine to offer a unique on-shelf image that supports brand messaging and premium appearance on-shelf. The cans and kill clip are aligned and clipped in the clipping section. The kill clip goes over the top of the cans and folds into position. A small amount of adhesive is then applied between the can and the keel of the pack to secure the can orientation and to increase the overall pack integrity. This is compressed as the keel is formed. The formed keel provides the solid structure. Finally, the top panel is folded, glued and compressed that also includes a finger hole for easy carrying. Before launching into the market, the pack integrity has been strenuously tested in numerous dry, humid and wet conditions. With tailored common tooling, both AB InBev and GPI were able to replicate tests to simulate human behavior and market environments 
This was critical for AB and Bourbon to ensure that consumers are able to safely pick up and carry keel clips, guaranteeing a great consumer experience. Keel Clip is a perfect example of innovation that supports both premiumness and sustainability, as well as improving the consumer experience. So welcome back. Now it's all about great cartons and creativity. Coming next are the Pro Carton Young Designers Award and the new Pro Carton Students Video Award. And then the grand finale with the main awards of the European Carton Excellence Award. But before that, let's hear from the Pro Carton President, Horst Bitterman. of the European Carton Excellence Award. ECMA and Procoton have been running the award together for many years, a tremendous success story. To increase your anticipation for the main prizes, give me a few seconds to share some views. COVID-19 has changed our lives. My gratitude goes to everyone working in our great industry. Your outstanding commitment in this extraordinary situation under the strictest protective measures has kept the carton board and folding carton production standing and ensured the seamless supply of our customers with essential packaging for food and pharmaceuticals. Packaging is system relevant. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic and its economic consequences, the EU Commission intends to hold fast to the Green Deal for a climate-friendly transformation of the European economy. Many retailers and brand owners support this intention by demanding even stricter measures and quicker implementation of renewable, recyclable and recycled packaging to move towards the creation of a circular economy. Let us therefore take advantage of the current situation to make some long-lasting changes and come out even stronger. All we need is courage and optimism. We have every reason to look ahead. Cardboard is sustainable in terms of demand and in terms of environment. Cardboard is and will remain the packaging material of the present and the future. Now, let's look into the future. The future of the young generation, the Brokadon Young Designers Award. It has broken new records once again, 550 entries, that is almost 100 more than last year. 86 universities and design schools have participated a significant increase. And it is particularly pleasing that more and more local associations are joining Pokotone to hold national awards. The Netherlands, Romania and Turkey are new. Austria, Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Spain and the UK have done it before with big success. That is a great step forward to get our industry even more closely involved with the student community. We want to encourage the most talented young designers to consider a career in the world of packaging in our industry, the carton industry. And to accelerate this movement, we launched a brand new competition this year. The Brokaton Student Video Award invited media studies, business and film students to submit videos to promote the benefits of cartons and carton board. We were thrilled with a positive response. We had entries coming from 17 universities in 14 countries. I was one of the three judges together with a film producer and a film director. We were very impressed by the variety of concepts and scripts 
by the student creativity and by the high standard of execution. So, instead of only one winner, we have decided to announce two winners and two additional prizes. Let us use these inspiring videos to produce in the language of the young generation in our social media platforms to promote the sustainable nature of our products. What a great start to this new award. On behalf of steering committee of Brokaton and ECMA, I would like to thank all teachers and students for their high involvement and enthusiasm, the nine national association for lifting the design award into a further dimension, and the judges for the extra time and flexibility during these very special 2020 awards. A special thanks also goes to Tony and Mike for organizing this event. Who are the winner now, Tony? I hand over to you to present the best entries of the Brokerton Young Designers Award and the Brokerton Student Video Award from the old generation to the new generation. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Horst. Temporarily back to the old generation, but we will change. Not me. Over 550 entries, as Horst has said. 86 universities got involved this year across 25 countries. It's quite fantastic. So let's show you who they are. Even with universities closed, the ideas are absolutely s splendid. Great innovation, some great design work as well. Amazing, the amount of entries. Yep. New record by 20%, yep. Incredible. Gets bigger every year. Fantastic. Well done, everyone. I love that lens cover. I wonder if it won. <laughs> We're going to find out. Let's welcome now the design stars behind these great ideas. Hi everybody, can you see me? I can see you. Excellent, well done for getting this far. A lot of happy faces there. They deserve to be, Mike. First is the winner of the public voting. It was very close and we received nearly 4,000 votes. But the winner who receives a new iPad is Fulfill by Nora Carr, Miriam Bauer and Maureen Seal. Well done. Many congratulations. Excellent. Great Superb. Great design. We then move on to the Judges Award. The winners will win a trip to Italy when the time allows to visit the converter Arte Graffici Reggiani and Lai and the renowned Italian board mill RDM. First is the Newcomers Award, which is a new award this year and goes to the best entry coming from a student at a university that has not won before. And it went to... Avis by Jana Malakovskaya. Well done, Jana. Well done, Jana. It's a unique carton construction in the shape of a bird with a window to allow the product to be seen. The opening is the beak of a bird to allow access to the product. The jury said it was a fun and attractive pack for consumers of all ages. Really good one. Okay, the next one was the Save the Planet Award. And it's given to a design that reduces or eliminates the amount of non-sustainable material. And it goes to Cardboard Pads by Max Guggenheim. That is such a clever design. Well such done. The jury concept. said this entry falls into the simple but equally effective category. The cardboard pads provide protection and cushioning for the product, which could be an iPhone or electronic item, through the simple use of carton board and paper, and removes the need for bubble wrap or other plastic protection. For once, the jury agreed with the voting public, as the winner of the creative carton board category is also Full Fill by Nora, Miriam and Maureen, again. <laughs> well done, it must have been good. That's great to see. 
The judges found this to be a most innovative sanitary concept where the inner pack contains a folding pocket to house a used tampon, and the pocket behind holds a new tampon. That in itself was something, but the aesthetics also worked very well with the outer retail pack. So, two more to go. The winner of the creative carton board packaging in the food and drink category went to the easy to use flower box by Batichu Gabriella. Wonderful, clever idea. This is definitely one of those, why was it never done before? What well on Gabriella. Why didn't anyone think of that before? It's a flower sifter built into the pack. It not only provides an immediate consumer benefit, but creates a premium offering, adding value in a commodity sector that's dominated by price. Really clever. And finally, I am sorry that you can't all win, but the last winner of the PCYDA is Zig Zag Zig by Lorenz Keiblinger. The jury were very complimentary. In short, this is simply brilliant or brilliantly simple or just genius. <laughs> a packaging design construction for a knife that not only looks special, holds the knife perfectly securely, and yet can still fully see the knife. The creativity and strategic thought this produced we've rarely seen. Some comment. So uh, let's try the technology. Lorenz, are you there? And can we have a quick word? Hi, thank you. <laughs> Great, many uh, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, I'd describe it as a pack at the cutting edge of technology. <laughs> but uh, tell me, how did you come up with the idea? So my first thought was I wanted to have the knife stuck into the zigzag uh, construction. And the big challenge was to really get the knife visible for, from one side and still have the stability to keep it nice and, and fit in, in space. Great, okay. I, I'm, unfortunately, I couldn't hear the first start of it, but I got the end. So what would you say was the biggest challenge that you faced during the development? Yeah, so to keep the construction stable and still keep it uh, visible from one side was about the biggest challenge I faced in the process and to get it all right and and then get it easy to package too because it was a, a really uh, hard construction to, to like uh, fold it together so I had to come up with this mold and have to have it 3D printed in the times of Corona uh, which a friend of mine did so thank you to him for 3D printing my parts. Great looking Brilliant. pack Lorenz. Brilliant. Very very clever, really really well, well done. Thanks, Lorenz, for, for commenting there. So congratulations to all the winners and indeed to everyone that entered. And a particular thanks to all the great teachers who mentored and encouraged their students to enter the awards. But please enter next year too. Now, we thought we might listen to what last year's winners had to say about working with Carton Board. Now back to the quiz. Question five. The European Carden Excellence Award has categories for both cardens produced on virgin board and recycled board. But approximately how much of the European carton market is made up by recycled carton board cartons? Is it A, 30%, B, 40%, C, 50%, or D, 60%? 
Please choose now. 30, 40, 50 or 60 percent. What proportion of the market is made up by recycled carbon board? All selected? Okay, I can tell you the answer is C. The European carbon market is split approximately 50-50 between virgin board and recycled board. Mike, the uh, next question is right up your street. Oh yeah, thanks Tony. Brexit. So Brexit is a very topical subject at the moment, but which of these countries are not members of the EU? A, Norway, B, Finland, C, Hungary, D, Cyprus. So I'll give those answers again. A, Norway, B, Finland, C, Hungary, D, Cyprus. Which ones of those are not a member of the EU? I think this is quite a tricky question, actually. So I, I, I'm betting that it's not going to be um, an easy one for everyone to answer. So have you got your answers in the... Answers coming through in a couple of seconds. The answer is A. In fact, most people got it right. Norway has never been a member of the European Union. And incidentally, nor have Iceland, Turkey, Russia or Switzerland. And in fact, the UK is the only country to have withdrawn from being a member. Next comes a world premiere the brand new award that Horst talked about earlier. And it's my great pleasure to introduce for the first time the Pro Carden Student Video Award. Aimed at students undertaking media studies, marketing, filmmaking, business courses, we were delighted to have so many entries despite the difficult circumstances. And they came from a broad range, 13 different European countries entered, and the entries all had to be in English. The brief was simply to produce a short film promoting one or more of the benefits of cartons or carton board. The jury was comprised of a film director, a film producer, a marketing director, our own president, and they had a long debate about who, should, who the winner should be. Eventually they came down to four contenders, and here they are. Looking forward to seeing these videos. Hi, everybody. Sorry you can't all win, but uh, somebody's going to be very happy very shortly. Normally, there can be only one winner, but as Horst said, not in this case, because the judges decided that two videos stood out as being equally meritorious. The first winner is... Carton ASMR, The Sounds of Natural Packaging, by Melina Fashion. For those that are over 30, ASMR stands for Autosensory Meridian Response. We'd like to show you the video now, but listen carefully, because ASMR is all about whist hushed, hushed tones. And here's the video. Welcome. Today we are talking about packaging and the benefit of carton. As you know, packaging can help retailers and manufacturers to achieve the sustainability goals of the companies.
up to 85% of the paper and cardboard waste is being recycled. So different using sound to promote cartons and cardboard. The second winner is also completely different. And it is Carton Obscura How I Learned to Recycle and Love My Dream by Gianluca Quandra, Jonathan Franz, and Simon Lambert. A day in the life of a recycled carton. Let's see that day right now. Here you go, once again. All the attention is for the hard disk and nobody cares about the box. They buy stuff and they throw away the box. How unfair this is, doing this to me. A box of my experience. I've been recycled three times already, it's my fourth life. And now, just gone. Hold but not eternal. Wait, wait, wait a second, what's happening now? Hey, wait. Wait, 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 wait a second, what are you doing? What are you doing there? Stop! You know, life is strange. I've been a packaging of cereal for kids, a wine box, a post package, a shoe box. I've seen quite a few countries, quite a few people. I see more than most other packages. But I wouldn't have expected to become a dream. Fabulously original as well. So those two entry will share the 5,000 euro prize between them. Well, that will certainly help to pay off their student debts. Many congratulations and commiserations to the other two finalists that were both given highly commended awards by the judges. You can watch all the movies in full length on our website simply by visiting procarden.com or scanning the QR code on the screen now, which will bring you directly to the videos. Now the last two quiz questions. So phones at the ready. I wonder how many have got them all right so far, including our trick question about the football pitches. So question number seven. According to a study by the Technical University of Darmstadt, how many times can paper fibers be recycled? Is it A, three to five, B, five to seven times, C, nine times, or D, 25 times or more? So according to a study by the University of Darmstadt, how many times can paper fibres be recycled? Three to five times, five to seven times, nine times, the number of lives of a cat, or 25 times or more? What did they find? Three seconds to choose your answer before I tell you that it was D. The TU of Darmstadt found that paper fibres can be recycled up to 25 times or even more with only moderate loss of fibre quality. OK, guys, now the final question. So in the Eddie the Eagle film, Eddie was played by the famous actor Taron Edgerton. So Taron Edgerton has also played another personality in a film. Was it Batman in The Dark Knight, Elton John in Rocket Man? Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody or Tonya Harding in I, Tonya? So A, Batman in the Dark Knight, B, Elton John in Rocket Man, C, Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody or D, Tonya Harding in I, Tonya? So answers coming in three seconds. Get your, get your answers in. Two seconds. So the answer was B, Taron Edgerton 
has appeared in many blockbuster movies and he played Elton John in Rocket Man. So every time when you see Elton John from now on, you'll probably be thinking of Eddie the Eagle too. So talking of Eddie the Eagle, at the end of our interview, Eddie threw out a challenge to Tony and I. An interesting challenge, and we thought you might like to see it. So here it is. So I want to ask you a question, actually. Can you guys ski? Yeah, of course we can. Yeah, Ed, we're yeah. British. British, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, silly me. <laughs> but have you ever ski jumped before? Do you fancy a lesson in ski jumping? A crash course in ski jumping? I hate the word crash. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. What's let's, the worst that could happen? Let's try. Let's give it a go. <laughs> let's go. Hey guys, you look great. You kind of remind me of someone. So when you're going down the slope, bend your knees, keep your skis straight and stay balanced. So at the takeoff, I want you to clinch your bum cheeks as tightly together as possible. So Ed, that's going to help with the aerodynamics, right? Yeah, but that's not the main reason. Harder than it looks, isn't it? Never again. Well, he's a great guy, Eddie, but I'm not sure who those guys in those silly costumes were. So we can now also announce the winners of the quiz. So thanks for playing, and the five winners that will receive a signed Eddie the Eagle DVD are Alexander Schwab, Elizabeth Stocker, Martin Florizon. He's disqualified. <laughs> Unlucky, Martin. Um, a B uh, Mr. Pico from Poisson and Nicky Moran. Congratulations to the five of you. And you get an Eddie the Eagle, a signed Eddie the Eagle DVD. Okay, time for the climax of the show. Who will take home the big prizes and gain worldwide fame? Let's see some of the contenders. Entries are divided into four categories, and here's the contenders. Firstly, based on substrate, either virgin board or recycled board. And secondly, by market sector, food and drink or general packaging. As you now know, the market is split 50-50 between virgin and recycled board. So we'll start with the food and drink packaging virgin fibre. And the winner is, I've been practising this, Core Pick Usicon Honey Gift Pack by Cadpack and Metza Board. Congratulations to both the converter and the mill. I must admit, I've never seen such luxurious packaging for honey before. Moving on. The winner of the food and drink packaging recycled fibre is Enova Egg Carton by Alzamora Carton Packaging and Barden Board. Well done, Alzamora. Well done. Nice to see a pack without any plastic. Great. So next up is the winner of the general packaging virgin fibre category. And it's, wait for it. Yeah. Just coming on the, screen now. We really like this pack because we thought it was very clever in terms of its cardboard engineering. It gets rid of plastic. Uh, it's got little feet that also capture the moulded pulp insert inside. Um, and it's aesthetically very nice because you can open the top and display the eggs in your kitchen um, and it keeps them safe. Um, it also gives um, a lot of space for printing and marketing information which you don't get on a normal pulp egg box. So uh, an all-round very good pack. Thanks Janet. <laughs> so it's important to get the comment from the, from the judge. So the next up is the winner of the general packaging virgin fibre category and it is just coming up now it's Isana Cosmetics by Edelman and Stora 
Enso. Congratulations. I really like this pack. Um, whilst there's nothing so new about it, it was, it's a combination of different features that work really in harmony. So it holds the product very well and displays the product very well and neatly. But the opening um, with the petals was very aesthetically pleasing um, with the double petal as well. It, just a lot of thought had gone into it and the print really works in harmony. So the 3D petals, um, you pull them apart and it opens really beautifully to reveal the product inside. Um, really clever and really well constructed. So really nice execution. Whilst not brand new, it was the features coming together that made a really nice pack that we liked. Yeah, really pretty pack there. Great. So next one was the winner of the general packaging recycled fibre category. And the winner here was the disposable face mask by Vig Packaging and Maurice J. Vig. Well done, everybody. Well done, Vig Packaging. Many congratulations. This is a quite clever idea. It's completely made out of recyclable carton board, has a paper filter, and it's actually. Um, it solves the enormous waste problem of these masks we used in Corona times. So I think it's a quite clever design. You can print on it and easily recycle it. And it's nice to breathe. It's easier to get some air with this kind of mask than compared to the other ones. So smart design. It's a great, Thanks, it's a great product. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm even using one myself. <laughs> and you can brand it however you want. But a big thank you to all the companies that have got involved in supplying fast masks and face shields, often free of charge. But how nice it is to see one entirely based on paper materials. And very ingenious too. Next, and I, I love this award, we come to the pack that the voting public liked the best. So the winner of the public award polled over 30% of the votes cast and had twice as many votes as any other entry. And the winner is Keel Clip by Graphic Packaging International. So congratulations, GPI. Congratulations, Tom. And everyone else at GPI. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's looking like a game changer to me, that one. OK, now the special awards. The Save the Planet Award is given to a carton board idea or pack that has significantly reduced the amount of non-sustainable material that is used. The winner this year achieves that brilliantly. The winner of the Save the Planet Award is EcoFit Lid by Seder International Packaging Group and Storenzo. A great combination of barrier board innovation combined with converting creativity. We chose this particular uh, product. It is the EcoFit Lid as Save the Planet. It's made purely of carton board. And I suppose the only surprising thing is that this hadn't been created before. So what you have is a carton lid instead of a plastic lid, but you've got branding on it. So we can print on this branding space, advertising space, promotional space, a perfect fit, closes neatly, securely. And here are the openings, push and pull, to open and drink. Very simple, very effective, and definitely saving a huge amount of plastic. We're going to cut back to, uh, to, to Seda. Can you hear me, Andreas? Yeah, Andreas. Yeah, Andreas. Yeah, Andreas. Yeah, Andreas. Okay. OK, I couldn't hear you then, but uh, hopefully uh, you'll come through in a minute. Many, many congratulations. congratulations. So uh, 
Um, what's your immediate reaction to winning the Save the Planet Award? Well, we are extremely proud of that, I have to say, because um, this is really a game changer. We have, for the first time ever, and I have to, to I also I have to, 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 to come back to the judge. We, we should have done that much earlier. It's 100% recyclable. It's recyclable in the paper stream. It replaces plastic. So it's a fantastic solution and it is brandable. So you can print on it. You can use all the uh, value added that you have with folding cartons and printed products. So it's just, it's a game changer it's, and it's a fantastic solution. Thank you, Andreas. Great pack, well uh, done, great Andreas innovation. Andreas is right, it is a game changer. Congratulations. And, uh, and well done to Storenzo. Uh, I mean, they, pro they produce some of the most, some of the finest virgin board in the world. Simple as that. Now, I love innovation, so this award really appeals to me. It's for a pack or material that shows real creativity that we've not seen before. And the winner of the Innovation Award is the... It's coming up. It's the Refruiter Tray by Snell BV and Smurfit Kappa Hoya Papier Undercarton. Congratulations, guys. So it's clever. Construction must have been a contender, I would have thought, for the Save the Planet. Really clever tray. The judges and I chose this particular carton. Uh, it's called the Refruiter Tray as the most innovative carton. Very often we find a simple and cleverly thought out idea is often the best. So what you have here is a, a tray with feet, but not only that, on the underside, you have certain cuts made at, in certain places. What these cuts allow the package to do is to flex, so the fruit does not get crushed or squashed. So as the weight of the fruit pushes down, it flexes slightly, and the feet just lift, keeps it off the, uh, the, the surface. All in all, a very simple presentation and protects the product as well. Great one. Uh, let me see if I can ask Snell a quick question. Voot, do you have a, a message to the hundreds of people we have watching from Snell? Uh, well, I think the message is if we go for new materials, which we have in the carton board, to replace uh, plastic materials being used at this time, until this time, I think we have got a huge market in front of us, which we can, uh, which we can enter. Uh, consumers are pushing, uh, as never before, for sustainable material and we have the material so I think we have a lot of opportunities in front of us. Great so thank Great. you very so much thanks. for uh, for that um, lovely to to hear from some of the winners uh, personally live here. So, Congratulations uh, Snell. Yeah so here we are the ultimate prize the carton of the year la creme de la creme the best of the best, le pièce de résistance. This is the one that everyone wants to win. It's the ultimate prize we have in our industry. It gets unprecedented publicity from us, from the media, across the world. Keenly contested, the judges had a tough job, but the winner is Roku Gin by Van Gennecton Packaging and Storenzo. Wow, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Fantastic. Some happy looking faces there. Well done, the everybody. The reason why we chose this as a carton of the year, it's the holistic presentation of the carton, the, uh, the product story, which is on the side of the pack, which talks about the ingredients, it's the soft touch of the, of the carton itself. It's the way the bottle is contained and held within the package. Um, it's got beautiful detail of hot foil. It's just a very impressive presentation, not just because it's premium, but also because it communicates with the consumer. It tells you about the botanicals that are in the gin. And if you look, just you can just see to the side inside here, 
there's a detailed pattern in there which makes it more colorful so on the whole it's a fantastic presentation which looks amazing on shelf and the consumer communication is perfect perfect sums it up for me uh, let's see if we can have a quick word with uh, with mark at van Genekton. can you hear me mark I hope you can hear me. Okay, Loud excellent. Th th this, is, this is not the first time that Van Genekton have won Carden of the Year. But if I'm not mistaken, this pack was produced in, in Latvia this time. Yeah, that's completely right. It was produced in, in, in Riga. So we thank our colleagues which were producing it down there. But I also would like to, to uh, say thank you to the customer, which has been Suntory, and also in our workings, which has been a fantastic partner for us, making this happen here. Excellent. Yeah, let's not forget Store Enzo. Without their fantastic quality board, you wouldn't get such a superb result. You must all be very delighted. And here we can see the Stora team. Bit of a wave again. You're already, you're already on the gin. Well done, guys. Well done, Stora Enzo. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. I'll join you shortly, I promise. <laughs> Definite. Okay, so well done to all the winners and indeed everyone that took part. So normally at this stage we hand out copies of the award brochure, but they will now be in the post tomorrow. And anyone else that wants a copy can request one from the Pro Carton website. Well, we got there, Mike. We did. I think we should leave the final word to Eddie. But don't turn off quite yet, as we've got a special something right at the end that is guaranteed to make you chuckle. I don't know about you, but it's getting towards five o'clock, at least CET, and that bottle of gin does look particularly attractive. Roku gin and tonic, anyone? Cheers, Tony. Cheers, Mike. Cheers, everyone else. Cheers, everybody. Well done. Congratulations to all the winners. But even those that didn't win, they're still next year. But of course, life isn't always about winning. It's about doing the best you can, even under very difficult circumstances like now. That requires motivation, determination and effort. Do that and you too can soar like an eagle. <laughs> right, I'll just go with the flow. I'll be saying this in my sleep. <laughs> Olympian. British record holder. Sorry. <laughs> I won't be saying it in my sleep. St start again. Find out more at the Carton event and awards at the 7th of October. <laughs> I f***ed that up. <laughs> Find out more at the Carton event on the, and awards <laughs> on the 7th of, 7th of October. It was a ginger mustache. I know that. I never had a stock of ginger. Keep your skis straight and stay balanced. We don't people You kind of remind me of someone. <laughs> uh, what was the first one? Do that, and you too can fly like an eagle, or soar like an eagle. Do that, and you too can soar like an eagle. Sounds a bit here. You can soar like an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I'm a cider drinker. <laughs>